Gavin's early. I don't know how to feel about this. Yeah, he's a minute early. So oh, this he episode... left. He jumped the oh, gun. Okay. He left. He panicked. <laughs> I was just going to get into what this episode was or what the last one was. So, um, Were you great. there for the last one, Eric? Yeah. the the ha- You were. Uh, you left the next day. I'm sorry. I was yeah. just trying to remember the timeline. That's fine. You're, all, you're all good. Out. We're still waiting for Gavin, and then I can get right into it, and then it's all up, and then it's all on you guys. Another 30 seconds, and he should be here. Just 30 more seconds. So if there's any pleasantries you want to get out of the way. Uh, no, I, I feel pretty good about Jeff, anything pleasant? I have nothing pleasant to say. Oh. <laughs> hmm. I, I have nothing unpleasant to say either. I <laughs> okay, say you're just neutral. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's an important clarification. I thought maybe this was going to be like like you were in like a Gavin mood, you know, like you're in like a bad, oh. like you come in, in like a bad mood. No, I feel I feel way better than Gavin. Oh, okay, cool. I got a quick pleasantry. Dairy Queen has its own like menu in Texas. I learned last night. I thought that was very weird. Like they have yeah. they operate on a different level in Texas. Like it has yes, its own do. slogan, yeah. it has its own website. Mm-hmm. It's not even originating in Texas. No. I just I thought that was very strange. It sucks for uh Face Jam. It's like truly, oh. it's like truly awful. And what? what oh, just because like people want you to cover their their food. Oh, and we went the first time we tried to do Dairy Queen. They didn't have the food, so we had to eat. A lot oh, of, uh, we eat like a McRib. That's great. I that yeah. was weird. I was looking at their mascots because I forgot. I saw like an old Mister Misty ad with Dennis the Menace. And I was yeah, like, oh yeah, they had it. fucking Dennis the Menace was their mascot for a while. Why? Oh hell that, yeah. What happened with that? And he was their mascot from like seventy seven until two thousand two. Where yeah. they were like, kids don't know who Dennis the Menace is anymore. Like, there's no, he is completely irrelevant in the yeah. general culture scape. Let's get a new mascot that's just lips. Mm-hmm. Just floating lips that talk. Like, it's just strange. I will say, that Dennis the Menace 90s movie with the kid from Rushmore oh, as Dennis. Yeah. And then, mm-hmm. uh, I think, Walter Matthau. Yes, it was Walter Matthau. Uh, yep. Was fucking awesome. I don't know if you guys have seen it lately. Yes. I remember it being very, very good. Huh. I don't know if the movie's great, but Christopher Lloyd is so fucking scary as the villain yeah, in that is. movie. Like, mm-hmm. way beyond what a villain should be in a kid's movie. In a kid's movie, Dennis absolutely. He is so fucking creepy. Remember, yep. like, Mr. Wilson was like, I, f- I feel like the subplot was Mr. Wilson was like, we're doing horticulture, and he was like about to... He's about to have a, a, a rare orchid bloom for the first time in like 50 years. And he was trying to keep Dennis away from that, ruining it. Does that sound right? I mean, it does, but it also feels like the plot to an NES game. That's like, true. Totally, that that's the plot of the true. NES. Yeah. Th- like, it feels the same. We just had this kind of like similar conversation in Face Jam because we just had uh, Dairy Queen. And the thing that I brought up is that Dennis, the, there's two Dennis the Menaces. Mm. Are Dennis you aware the of this? Is the, is I think the we didn't we talk about this on the show that there's like a, a British Dennis the Menace that yeah. has no. nothing to do with the other Dennis. They just coincidentally existed at the same time. That's news to me. Look, no, at we talked off. about this on the show. On this show, <laughs> on this show, we, we have talked, talked about, about it on with Face Jam, and it was like I couldn't believe. There, look at his little gremlin dog. Like, I think I think I would remember if we talked about it on this right? show. Well, like, now that Gavin is late, like look we'll, at this we'll fucking thing. What is like? Look at this. Like I'm pretty sure. Hey, Gavin, you, what's up, buddy? Oh, my mic was reset. I had to uh, re-put in all my. Do I sound the same? Yeah, you sound, yeah, you sound great. You sound fine. Um, you, sound, okay. you sound flustered because you're three minutes late. Oh, yeah. we talking? Uh, we talking the Beano? We talking uh, Dennis the Menace? We, what's going okay, on? Okay, so this yeah. is episode 107. The last episode was all about uh, uh, a home vibe inspector. Uh, how to buy a house, getting trench foot in the bathtub, uh, the big bad werewolf, and the jackass too spicy icy. So uh, this is episode 107. Go nuts. We talked about uh, the Dennis the Menace thing before, right, Gavin, on the show? The British Dennis the Menace? With the- I don't know how that. Dennis the Menace was invented one day apart from Dennis yeah. the Menace. <laughs> we've talked about this on here before. Jeff, I think like, we've never I- had this conversation. Eric said they talked about it on Face Jam. I don't remember this these pictures or ever talking about this. Maybe I this don't was think in, we did photos. Maybe this was in like a talked about it. it. Nick doesn't remember it either. Maybe it was like a post. You guys talked about it in the post. Show I remember or as something. a kid seeing uh, clips from the movie and wondering <laughs> why they cast like a little blonde kid as Dennis the Menace <laughs> when he looks absolutely nothing. And I was like, where the hell's Nasher? <laughs> Wait, his name's Nasher. The little dog. <laughs> the little dog's Nasher. It's a great name for a dog. Uh, Eric wants us to do an intro, and Nick said, yeah. Oh, no, he's saying, yeah, look at his teeth. I thought he was, like, aggressively supporting uh. Eric. 
Uh, hello and welcome to episode 107 of the F*** Face Podcast. My name is Jeff Ramsey. With me, as always, Gavin Free, Andrew Panton. In no particular order, I like and hate them the exact same amount. Uh, not playing, no favorites to play there. Uh, this is year three, finally. No. See, yeah. Fuck. Yeah, year three. Year yeah, three. Yeah, for a while. Season, season four, year three, volume one, episode 107. I will say uh, yeah. the <laughs> intros f- faced me recently in, a, so? in an unexpected way. Somebody reached out and said that we skipped an episode number, that we went from like 86 to 88. And I was like, that, that'd be funny if that was true. If we have been one week off this entire time, that would be great. So then I went to confirm it. And our intros are all over the fucking place, and it was a nightmare to try to determine <laughs> when we said an episode Fuck name or not. You <laughs> <laughs> soundboard, please, Nick. If you could clip that for me, I'll need that for the break show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's like okay, is it in the beginning or is it thirty-five minutes into this episode? I don't know where to look. It could be anywhere. Well, yeah. You really f- faced yourself with that, Andrew. It was unfortunate. Yeah, I don't think I, I the think most. Wrong disruptive uh, intro person in the in the history of the show you think i'm the disruptive intro person yes i do that's fair i'm not even actually gonna argue that i think that's probably right <laughs> i don't intentionally mean to be so i'm not gonna fight you on it but uh you argued against intros for like 30 episodes i did well because we sometimes talk about like we will continue a conversation in a way I don't know, just it felt like we're an unstructured show and the intros felt structured. Man, you know what's hard to talk about is explaining our podcast to strangers. I, uh, I, was in, uh, <laughs> I was out of town over the weekend doing a convention, you know, like a day job, Rooster Teeth convention type thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I was just like signing autographs and sitting at a booth, you know, m- like voice actors do. And uh, I talked to so many regulation listeners. Actually... Without a fault, almost every I kept a like a check mark on the table every time somebody talked about either of the three podcasts I'm on. And congratulations, <laughs> face destroyed the other two. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but I will say, red versus blue destroyed <laughs> face. It wasn't even fucking close. <laughs> uh, but oh, I almost, I feel like this your- almost everybody who came up to me uh, because I made red versus blue like a hundred years ago, and I make <laughs> face today. But uh, almost. Uh, to a T, everybody that came up to me said, hey, I, uh, you know, I, I wanted to come up and say I'm a regulation listener, but I don't know, is, is this a comment? Is having a conversation with you a comment? Am I a comment lever? Oh, and I had to be like... Absolutely. I, what? I, I, no, I, I said no. no. I said, Here, here's what I said. I said, there are two entirely separate things. What you are, <laughs> if you come up to me in person and have a conversation with me, you're a conversation haver. That's totally different. That's ridiculous. The whole point of a comment lever... It's like, who leaves comments? Who goes out of their way to actually go and seek out other people's content and leave a comment? If they no. go up to you in person, that's, that's one beyond. No. But it's not a- I disagree. I str- First of all, I feel like a comment needs to be a thing that is in a public space that people can see. Secondly, you're having to make an assumption on motive. The person who's talking to Jeff may not have been there to see Jeff specifically and learned he was there while there. As the person who coined the term comment lever, Eric, I'm going to need you to chime in on this. Uh, I agree with Gavin. This is the same to me as a DM. Insanity. Okay. It's it's like a DM. Hang on. I'm not, Jeff. Hang on. Hang on. I'm not done. Uh, It's the same as a DM where somebody is messaging you directly. To me, it's the same. They're commenting about the show. They're commenting to you about the thing that they listen to. And that's fine. Be a regulation listener and then you leave a comment. You're a comment lever. And that's fine. But that's what it no, is. No, I, I don't. I, I think that that's a, a terrible analogy. Uh, <laughs> there's no such thing as an IRL DM. You know, they're not leaving it anywhere. It's like, as Nick said in the comments, there's no paper trail. It's going out into the ether. It's not being but left you're bring, anywhere. But you're bringing it, it here. It, it, it could be. But you brought it somewhere. <sighs> you're I saying mean, it's not anywhere, but you've brought it here. Oh, my God. Point to where it's written down. Point to where it's left. As someone who used to be. A comment lever, a straight up comment lever on Rooster Teeth. Even before it was called that, redversusblue.com, I was a comment lever. And I went out of my way one day to become an in real life person. That was the extra step. I flew to New York. I met you. You told everyone my fly was down. I'd taken it a step further at that point. 
That, yeah, that, that's so, a conversation happening. Yeah, we were having so a conversation. You're just <laughs> arguing the point. You just your entire point is that there's a different layer to it. That it's a different yeah, thing. It's totally different. Co- yeah, co- you're, comment yeah, Gavin, comment you're not lever denotes <laughs> denotes a written conversation. It denotes something that's being left for somebody to find later in written form. I guess I, I'm just trying to organize them in a hierarchy. I think I don't comment hierarchy. definition. A verbal or written <laughs> remark okay. expressing an opinion okay. or reaction. Okay. That's yeah, what I'm I saying. You can't yeah. be you can't be the third one. You can't skip number two. You go regulation listener, you go comment lever, and then whatever you talk There's, <laughs> to Jeff yeah, about no, Jesus life, you've become you've gone through comment lever. You've already become one. And you're now into the step above it. That's my point. So if you were walking down the street, right, and you see Nicolas Cage on the side of the road, like fucking having a Pepsi. And you walk up to him and you go, Hey Nicolas Cage, just want you to say I really loved Con Air, big fan. And he goes, <laughs> Thank you. Are you a comment lever? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, wait. I, I'll, so, say, I'll say this. I think it's ludicrous, but Eric read the definition of comment and it fits. And I'm a, if, if, if anything, I'm a dictionary stickler. Dictionary as you, kid number two. Yeah, yeah. dictionary kid. <laughs> I'm a dictionary kid. Everybody, uh, that should be plainly <laughs> obvious just from the tater tot conversation alone. So I, I got to go with the dictionary. I, so I, 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 will, I will accede that point, but I still think in the spirit of it, it's wrong. Uh, okay, so here's the thing. Everyone keeps saying that, like, oh, comment lever. No, you're just leaving a comment. You've left a comment. You've walked by someone and you said this thing. You've left a comment, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong yeah. with that. You've, no, there's you're nothing just a comment, being a comment Yeah, lever. it's the difference exactly. between listening and talking. Yes, Can I, thank so, you, Gavin. That's it. That's all it is. That's it. That's the, the, that's the delineation. I would like to just clarify your position, Gavin. So you think that somebody who talks to Jeff at a convention went there they are in the conversation haver camp but to become a conversation haver you have to walk through comment lever you have to go down the comment lever path it's like a monopoly board like you yeah. have to go past mm. comment lever to advance yeah. around and the then, corner and there's to, no there's okay. no chance card that lets you skip comment lever you've you've become one you've left the comment Wow, okay. I, I really did not expect this to turn into such a, a hotly debated <laughs> thing. It wasn't even the point of the conversation. Uh, where I was going with it is, uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> I'd love to hear what the audience has to say. I assumed because we were having a conversation in person, we were conversation havers. Uh, if you want to call that a comment lever, I guess they left me a comment, and then I returned <laughs> them with a comment, and then they left me another comment, and then I comment back, and then they comment back, and then after 30 or so seconds well, of exchanging comments they leave and i consider that a conversation but it was really just a branched series of comments when you look at it i guess that fine i'm down with that whatever you guys want uh imagine the logistic of the comment leaving we're doing right now between the four or five of us this is phenomenal uh however uh the point i was going to make is you wouldn't believe all the baseballs i signed oh Almost uh, more than anything else, I signed a bunch of Zimmer cards, which is, as always, is an honor, an honor to sign a Don Zimmer card. And I signed maybe 15 of them. But the thing that people brought up, and I signed some shirts, I signed some like jet ski uh, apparel, I signed some uh, like Boys of Zimmer stuff. Uh, one of the vinyl, uh, or one of the, what we decided it's not a flag, it's a banner. I signed one of those. <laughs> but so many people brought up baseballs. Now, uh, three or four people brought up baseballs. They were pre-hit by us for like from the sale. But a lot of people just brought br- bought brand new baseballs and just had me sign them. And it got me thinking. I think we're a baseballs podcast, not a baseball <laughs> podcast, but specifically baseballs, like the actual tool used in baseball. Yeah, but we've we've done more runs of bats than balls. Well, that's that we. I have four hundred baseballs in my library right now that are waiting to be hit. So that won't be, that won't be the case forever. That's fair. I mean, it eventually would swap. I'm just trying to think of what we. I didn't more sign. Of. I didn't sign a single baseball bat, face <laughs> or otherwise. But I signed 35 baseballs, probably. Well, it's tough to bring in a, a bat. I feel to convince a weapon. Are you kidding, dude? Have you seen how many people bring in swords that are 11 feet tall that have shotguns peace bonded on them? Like <laughs> everything people bring to a convention is some sort of a fantastical sci- sci-fi weapon. That's fair. I had a dude bring in a baseball bat as a part of his costume that had uh, like railroad ties hammered through it, but he didn't ask me to sign it, so that doesn't count. <laughs> so are That we, was a legitimate weapon. Maybe we're a baseball accessories podcast. Like, it's not, not the game itself, but the equipment required. 
Is the football in football an accessory though? I feel like it's more, it's like the main bit. It's a tool of the game. Or whatever the tool of the trade. I don't remember the wording on that card. Like, like a towel. Tool of tools <laughs> yeah, of the like trade. A towel. Yeah, it's a tool of the trade for <laughs> sure. I think my favorite part of the whole this is going back to the what what is and isn't a comment lever. My favorite uh-huh. part is just thinking of all of the regulation listeners who know that they can only become a comment lever once and that it's permanent and they're just keeping <laughs> their mouth shut and not writing stuff cuz like well, I don't want to lose status as a regulation you know what it's listener. Like? It's like playing a global game of infection. <laughs> yeah. It's like someday there's going to be one there's going to be one regulation listener left. And as soon as we find them and make them talk, have a in-person comment session with them, then we'll flip and we'll start all over, all over again. It would be fun to start a spreadsheet or a survey of like when did you turn and like fill out the form of like <laughs> what what made you consciously what? become did it happen? Did it happen before we delineated or did you make the decision to, to change from regulation listener to comment lever? And what I would it? love I would love to know just the percentage of those people that were angered enough by Andrew to make a comment. <laughs> it, will, it will always be it's because like, of what Andrew said, I think. It's like 64 percent of all comment levers became comment levers because of something Andrew said. What about if somebody, what if a mime attempted to, do, like, if a mime was interacting with you, is, is a mime a comment lever? Is performance art a comment? Well, if the mime typed a comment, what do you mean? Well, no, like, if a mime, you know how a mime performs, lasso or whatever, like, if a mime tried to have a conversation through typical mime like if a mime moves. pretended to go up an escalator towards you, yeah, like, what do you mean? Yeah, like, if you tried to communicate that, because obviously... Obviously, you can have nonverbal communication, but I'm just curious where the mime falls in the category of comment leaders. Eric, can you read the definition of comment <laughs> again? We'll we'll get to the bottom of this. I, I mean, but the thing is, like, I just need he's the definition. still caught a verbal or written remark expressing an opinion or reaction. Mm. So it's not verbal. It's not verbal or written. So no. But Gavin, yeah, I mean, si- Gavin si- immediately language. blew it up and he said, like, type it. And that would be it. if he's doing. Yeah. Listen, if somebody does performance art about this show, they're a fucking comment lever. Period. <laughs> they might be a they might be a comment performer, but I don't know if they're leaving it. OK, but, I will say that they would be a comment performer. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. If someone says something to you in sign language, that's not written or verbal, but I would no, say it still is a comment. Totally. 100 percent. Yeah, that's that's a form of communication. So I tried to clarify if we got to live by the rules of the dictionary, we got to live by the rules of the dictionary. That's all I'm saying. All right. Can I ask a completely unrelated question? <laughs> Please. I was listening to, you know that song, Back That Ass Up? I was listening to that recently. Mm-hmm. And I was curious, what's the maximum distance you could request for somebody to back the ass up? <laughs> I'd like to see you back the ass up 26.2 miles. That's the thing. Like, if you're pulling binoculars out, I feel like it's rude. Like, what is the courtesy for the back that ass up request? I think Are you like, asking how much the ass should be backed up or from how yeah, far Yeah, how far the does the ass start? need to be backed up before like you need to take steps forward? Like it I is think, inappropriate I think it's, for you to make that request. I think it's four feet. See, I think it might be a dinklage. I think a dinklage <laughs> is the perfect length for a back that ass up request. And, and re- remind me exactly how much the dinklage is uh, in, uh, I don't know, a more traditional. It's one yard. One yard. So three feet. So, okay. I think that's the ma- I think anything outside of the Dinklage range is inappropriate for you to ask for that ass to be backed up. I think that's fair. Gavin? I was equating it to doors. Like, there's nothing worse than when somebody holds a door open for you and you're too far away and you gotta do that, like, little run thing. Like, it's the definite rules of etiquette within the move. Hmm. Yeah. I was, just, I was curious what you guys thought, what, what the range was. I think, I, think a dink- I think a Dinklage is fair, yeah. Okay. It's important. Hey, uh, uh, not, not to go back on comment levers... Uh, but I did, <laughs> and I didn't expect to transition into this, but this is a great segue. I did see one comment on, I believe, Twitter the other day that I thought was so funny and so clever, I, I, and I didn't write it down, and I didn't write down their name, so I have no idea who to attribute it to. But to the person that said, essentially, I'm going to surmise, is it possible that Andrew is a time traveler who time traveled back in time <laughs> to steal the gummies from himself to save some future trauma or tragedy from happening? I thought that was brilliant, and I would like to know, Andrew, what do you think the chances are that future you traveled back in time to steal those gummies to avert some sort of tragedy? My thought process would... I also saw that. I thought, that's really funny. 
then I had a brief moment of what if, and then went back to that's really funny. I'd give it a, a 3%, a 3% chance that I time traveled and saved myself from gummies. Because none <laughs> of the other stuff was taken. Only the tampered with stuff was removed from my order. I had multiple things in that order that were that's very why scalable. I think that lends more to the idea that it was you protecting yourself from the That's future. what I'm saying. Like yeah. that, that builds the case that it was future me going back. That means the gummies I, must have been so bad. Otherwise, you would have come back and stolen the bovril and all that other stuff. Yeah, there's so many things that have happened in my life that would have been better to be avoided. So I feel like I don't know why I chose the gummies as the thing that had to be altered. Dude, but, who knows how bad things could have gone if you eaten those true. gummies. That's the thing. You might have gotten an extra large chunk of metal and then somehow it went through your body and you like it like got caught in your urethra and like ripped your dick off or something. Who knows? I can't imagine with all the <laughs> ankle rolls I've had that that is the moment that I decide to prevent. Because it seemed pretty inconsequential in the grand scheme. Well, one would see, one would assume that time travel to right wrongs uh, or to fix a path is probably used exceedingly sparingly because of butterfly effects. So mm -hmm. I think it would just lend credence to the idea that these gummies were, uh, if this were to have happened, catastrophic to your future. Yeah, I think that's a hard point to argue against. And I think I'd it's agree. interesting if that's possible. And if we're if we're uh, allowing for the idea that Andrew has the ability to time travel, Gavin, I think it stands to reason that you and I both certainly also have it and probably uh probably have used it even more often than, than Andrew. So I, I think maybe we should all just like keep our eyes open uh, <laughs> for the next couple of just everyone else. Just see what's going on around you. <laughs> look, look for a you hiding behind a tree or something. And uh, if anything shows up missing or seems weird, take a second, write it down. And uh, so we can digest it and see if maybe, maybe future f face is fucking with current f face. I'm going to take inventory of the back of all my shirts just so I have a higher chance of recognizing myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running away. <laughs> the problem is future you would know you did that. Ah, shit. Oh, fuck. It's got to be really hard to catch future us. <laughs> I love the idea of future you being like, I got to wear a shirt I don't currently yeah. own for this to work. If I do that, that's the only obstacle. Do you think there's the possibility, Andrew, that in the dark... Uh, future you snuck into your bathroom and pulled the shampoo out of your ass <laughs> and put it back on the shelf. <laughs> I so hope so. I really hope. I hope you get like it's like a three wish scenario. And my first one was to remove the metal gummies. My second was to, to gently push the shampoo bottle out of the ass to put on the counter. You're about to be in a situation in a hospital where you're like, I found it, I swear. <laughs> what if that's Jeff's ghost? The gentle ghost? What if it's just Jeff? It's future Jeff. <laughs> it feels like a very Jeff move that he would use time, his three opportunities of time travel to just fuck with himself. Dude, the law, think there's a gentle ghost. The I law so of this podcast. so plausible. <laughs> <laughs> I would absolutely push myself over gently. <laughs> oh. I feel like the law of this podcast is already so complex, and now we're adding a time travel <laughs> time element travel to it. Element. It's going to get just, real messy. It just makes sense to me. I will say, you know, we're talking about <laughs> earlier about how future us would know everything past us was going to do, so would know how to mm -hmm. safeguard it. I will say, the one thing I think that current us has going for us is... Uh, this is confusing <laughs> to say. The, 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 the current <laughs> us has going for we, I guess, uh, <laughs> is, that, uh, is that future us is probably as lazy as current we, mm. and so the future us isn't going to put that much work into it, right? They're yeah, going to half-ass most of it, so there's a pretty good chance we could catch us down the road, just knowing our, is our ethic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I, we're screwed. <laughs> Both versions of us. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't understand why future you let you go down the stairs with the fire department. Like why they? That? <laughs> yeah, that's. I'm questioning future me's choices. Future you didn't like hit the snooze on the alarm the day you decided to go an hour early to my hubby's bagels. <laughs> Oh, God. Or stop you from uh, leaving that place without taking a shit first. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
man, time travel's wild. Yeah. <sighs> what a great invention. Um, <laughs> as far as far as like comments and stuff making us laugh, I did. Somebody sent me a really funny screenshot of they they got banned from I believe NHL 22. I'm guessing. Because they named their creative team the Vancouver Child Kickers. And they got like a whole full like written email about it. About how it goes against their term of service. And that this was considered a serious violation. And that they are banned from playing for a full week. And that their their account has been flagged. And essentially it's like the next ban you're done. And we're going to be watching you very closely. was, Was the email. So I didn't think triggered it. The child, the word child, or the fact I, that it was pairing think, kicker. Yeah, I think, I think that's the pairing it. of the yeah, the Vancouver child kicker. I'll see if I can find the, the email that they tweeted at me. So I've been trying to reach out to EA to see if we can we can serve this. They did the appeal process and they were denied an appeal. So it's it's in a bad <laughs> spot with the case, but uh, I thought that was very funny. I felt terrible for this person. As somebody who has been banned wrongfully on Xbox Live. <laughs> I related to their pain. Yeah, I got banned uh, because I named my griffball team Team Scrotum, and uh, I I wasn't able to participate in one of the tournaments. <laughs> did you uh, along those same lines? Did you see that comment lever? I think it might have been on Instagram who posted that they uh, they got kicked out of the SpongeBob store at I guess Universal Studios maybe because they had an anal passage shirt on. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> that got me. What that got me thinking because I have one of those anal passage shirts. What is the most embarrassing place I could wear an anal passage shirt to? Like we, like could I wear it to my next? Like could I wear it to my colonoscopy? Or would that be Probably, too mm, on the nose? I think that's on the nose. I don't. I think that. Like plays. could I wear it to a funeral? Probably if like uh, Biden gave you that Medal of Freedom or whatever. Ooh, <laughs> accept the Medal of Freedom in an anal passage shirt. That would be good. Drop the uh, the email in the thing. Just read it Dude. quickly. While reviewing your account, we identified the following violation. NHL 22, inappropriate content, references to children. <laughs> Name, Vancouver Child Kicker. <laughs> so I think any mention of child, you'd get banned. Uh, I guess, yeah, by definition, reference to children, but that doesn't seem... I don't know. I feel like there are exceptions. W- what if... What if you... What if they submitted the name, Do Not Kick Children? <laughs> <laughs> Because that's like, you couldn't get any more hard-nosed against the yeah. idea. That would really, I think, put EA in a tough spot. Yeah, They're well. not going to be anti, anti that. They can't support child kicking. It's like an yeah. actual thing. Yeah, that, I know, Vancouver adult kicker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Hey, what did you guys want to talk about today? We had homework from the last show. Oh, yeah, we had us. homework. We had, oh, two things. So we had oh, three things. We had homework. We should probably talk about the bread ties we forgot to talk about. Okay. Uh, because that's a thing. And then uh, should, we should talk about the Do no, I think we should hold off. I don't... We, we, that should be... Okay, because that leads me to a whole... That whole side idea you and I had, Andrew. I, yeah, I think we got to hold off on the We might get sniped yeah. on that if we yeah, leave yeah, that we in. we got to hold off on that. All right, well, we're not going to talk about the thing that was bleeped. <laughs> <laughs> Today's episode is sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. I love to shop online. It's the main way I shop. However, I find I shop online. I naturally so rarely have anything to put in in the coupon section. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. How it works is imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button appears and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. Uh, Honey is a great service. I've used it to recently save money on some shirts I ordered. It's just so convenient and easy to install. It's fantastic. Honey doesn't just work on desktop. It works on your iPhone, too. Just activate on Safari on your phone and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. I'd never recommend something I don't use. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash face. That's joinhoney.com slash face. 
What's holding you back from the ultimate gaming experience? Is it the hundreds of dollars it costs for your setup? Or are you the busy on the go type with only minutes to spare? Level up your game with Backbone, the universal gaming essential that lets you instantly play hundreds of console games on your iPhone, no console required. Backbone is the newest game-changing essential that transforms your iPhone into a handheld console so you can play anywhere, anytime. Simply plug in your iPhone to the Backbone and enjoy console quality controls with responsive buttons and triggers, clickable analog sticks, and more as you play Xbox, PlayStation, PC, and App Store games. Backbone lets you explore thousands of worlds from Spider-Man to Madden to Grand Theft Auto. If you don't own a console, no problem. Stream hundreds of games like FIFA, Halo, Minecraft, and more through cloud gaming services like Xbox Game Pass, NVIDIA GeForce Now, and Google Stadia. And even if you already have a PlayStation, Xbox, or PC, play games you own with Remote Play or the Steam Link app. Experience for yourself what TechCrunch calls the closest we've ever seen to a portable Xbox. Go to playbackbone.com slash face now to order your backbone until June 30th and get free access to over 350 console games and perks, including one month free of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, one month free of Apple Arcade, two months free of Google Stadia Pro, and three months free of Discord Nitro. Find your next adventure at playbackbone.com slash face. This ad is brought to you by HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. HelloFresh delivers fresh quality produce from the farm to your door in less than a week, so you can savor summer flavors right from home. HelloFresh now has 30 dinner recipes to choose from every single week. That's the most choices of any meal kit. Going away this summer? Update your delivery address and enjoy HelloFresh at your vacation destination with just a click. Plans are flexible, so they work with your changing of schedule. I love HelloFresh. I've talked about it before. It's such a time saver. It's a great way to experiment new recipes. It's always delicious. It's just so much fun to get the box. I would highly recommend anybody who hasn't or, or even you now is considering cooking, even if you don't have a lot of experience doing it, to, to look into HelloFresh. It's a fantastic service. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Face16 and use code Face16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash Face16 and use code Face16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. Thank you. So do you want to do the homework? Yeah, what's your homework? What, 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 did you, what was your homework, Andrew? Do it. My homework, oh, well, the homework you assigned for all of us was that mm -hmm. we had to come up with what we were the best in the world at and what mm -hmm. we thought the other members of this podcast might be the best in the world at. That was the homework. Oh, okay. Yeah, Gavin, did you do your homework? <laughs> sort of. Sort of? Okay. I don't really understand the homework. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> well, because if either one of us were best at anything, we wouldn't be doing this. That's not true. <laughs> that's that's a that's a fair we've gone over before. There's there is some things that you could be best at that there is no glory for. Let me read your uh, po podcast homework reminder that we said we would think about what we are best in the world at and what we think others would be best at. But you I meant other people reminder. on this podcast. I did. Oh, okay. If you wanted to go broader, I think that's fine. I mean, it's Jeff's thing. All right. Uh, Who wants to go first? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't. I don't even remember assigning the homework, so I don't really give a shit one way or the other. But we I thought this was Andrew homework. <laughs> no, this is Jeff homework. Yeah, it feels like Andrew to... homework. I remember what? asking if you guys had any idea what you thought the bet you were the best in the world at. For sure, I definitely. The end of the question. last episode we recorded, you're like well, homework for all of us. This is what we'll do, and we'll talk about it on the next thing. And then yeah, Gavin but see, said, "The way you just said that, it sounds like something you would say." Well, and it it's feels not like my maybe fault you said that you it. sounded like me. Apparently, mm. <laughs> maybe that's what I'm the best in the world at. Oh, shit. No, there's no way. Jeff replied in a funny way. He said, uh, I guess you're the best at remembering homework. <laughs> Which I thought was a snipe at me when I'm just trying to get your fucking bit done. Sound this like is a your idea. Sound like a compliment I don't know why, to me. I don't know why you're coming at me. I'm just trying to do a thing for you. <laughs> can, Gavin, can we agree, you and I, that whether, like, without relitigating the past, that this feels way more like an Andrew thing than a me thing? I would agree. Yeah. I don't care how it feels. It is a you thing. I think it's the yours feel now, of it though. is irrelevant. Like <laughs> you're you're so passionate about it. I think it's. I think you like you. Your passion is kind of uh, taking ownership over it. No, I, cool. I, I don't. I, we don't have to do it at all. I'm just trying to do your. I'm trying to make sure your thing gets done. What Andrew, are you the would best? Would you say in the world this at? is a, a betrayal by Jeff? I would say this is a definite betrayal by Jeff. A hundred percent. I'm trying to be Team That's Jeff here. Up pretty quickly after Eric betrayed you. About what did, when did Eric betray me? What was Eric the betrayed Eric betrayed you over the Jeopardy rules. 
Oh, that was I was in the wrong in that one. Yeah, that I, was a completely was, justified betrayal. This one yeah. does not feel like that. <laughs> yeah. I don't think calling it a betrayal is even wrong. We talked about that nobody had specifically worded it, but it was never clarified. I never people have said that I've changed the rules. It's not that I changed them. I just never vocalized them. And I realized that that's where it went wrong. <laughs> right. That's the constant <laughs> rule in my head. These podcasts just aren't the same without Greg from accounting. <laughs> finance. finance. Sorry, from finance. Shit. <laughs> Very different. Greg from accounting was clearly never on the podcast. Andrew, what, <laughs> what would you say you're the best in the world at? Well, I have, I have three things that I wrote down because I took your, your homework assignment seriously. Well, did, did whoever different. gave the homework is debatable, but you did oh, go it's not. It's down. absolutely you. Uh, number one. I don't think I am the best of the world at this anymore. But when I was thinking about it, I do truly believe that at one point in time, I was the best at the sewing machine in the world. <laughs> like, hands down. Mm. Not never close. So far from being a great athlete, it was never incredible in that regard. But specifically the sewing machine, I think I was amazing at it. I think I was the best in the world. In my prime. In my sewing de machine day prime, number one. Number two on my list, and I'm 80% sure I wrote, I wrote a little like percentage of how confident I am in this. I think I might be the best in the world at waking up when needed without an alarm. I'm highly skilled at this. You slept in a bathtub for five hours. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't have anything to do the next day. Oh. Like I didn't. <laughs> if I have a thing, if, I, if I'm scheduled for something or I need to be up at a certain time, I will hit it within five minutes without an alarm. You've got a good internal alarm. My internal clock is incredible. Well, why don't you use it then? Because there have been several times where <laughs> you've been, you've, had, you've had to get up early and to, to avoid oversleeping, you stay up all night. Or you well, just lie down in the bath. <laughs> that's, you know, that's, a, that's a great point. That is use a great your point. talent because if you're the best in all no, of the world. I don't, because I set an alarm because I don't fully trust it. But I, I am consistent at it. I've never missed anything because I slept through it. I always get up early, regardless of the time. You may have poked a giant hole in that. I may have to remove that from the list. That's why it was 80%. Oh, okay. But generally speaking, I feel I'm pretty good at that. But I think you're right. There are times in the show where I've said I've had to do things to, to make sure I was, I was there on time. It's just a paranoid thing for the show specifically. 80%. So that's my 80%. 100%. I think there's no denying this. I feel very strongly about this. I think, 100%, I am the best Xbox Garfield Kart Furious Racing player in the world who has had part of their bowel surgically removed. I feel strongly on that. Uh, I don't think there's any debate about that. When did you lose some bowel? I was like five. Oh, okay. Long time ago. Had to have an operation as a whole thing. But I don't think there's anyone better at Garfield Kart Furious Racing on the Xbox, who has also had part of their bowel removed. And it's any part. So, like, even if someone had a different part of the bowel. Any that part. Would still count. I mean, it's a lot. You got a lot to work with on the bowel. It's a lot of area. <laughs> any opposition to that one? You got to fucking hold the poke in that, Gavin? No, I think you might you be tell me the, I think you might be right. I think that might be. Uh, I think I mean, that's, that's my, my current. We'll have to treat it with the same level of detective work as my overkill clip. We'll have to start Absolutely. interviewing other people on the leaderboard, see if all their bowel is there. But yeah. I think you could be right. No, that's fair. Yeah. I it's, have no it's, issue definitely, that. it's definitely something that's researchable. So those are mine. I'd love okay. to hear what, what, you're, you're to, what you guys think you're the, you're the best at. Gavin, do you want to go or you want me to go? Um, my one, I think I'm the best at um, when something goes wrong and I get filled with anxiety, I immediately skip to the, to the worst case scenario and bottle it all up and deal with it at 3 a.m. I'm the best at doing that. <laughs> I can carry on doing something after receiving, you know, bad news or like everything's gone wrong. Just swallow it up, worry about it at three, but I can still continue functioning that day. I'm pretty good at it. So 3 a.m. is the worst time to ever try to reach you. 3 a.m. is the worst time just for anything ever. Like if you're awake at 3 a.m., it's a disaster. Something's yeah. gone wrong. That's true. It's That's not either. It's not, it's not like late night or early morning. It's just. A horrendous hour. The only reason to be joyfully awake at three in the morning is uh, is if you're into astrology or astronomy in some way, <laughs> and you're like wanting to see a comet go by or a blood yeah. moon or something. Lunar yeah. eclipse. Sure. I feel like I had a lot of like three a.m., four a.m. Halo two nights. Outside of that, I can't think of any positive times in which I was up at that hour. 
If I'm playing video games at 3 a.m., I'm I'm yelling at myself while playing video games at 3 a.m. that I stayed up an hour too late and I'm going to regret it. Yeah. You think two is the cutoff? Yeah, for me at this. Yeah, because two is still yeah. like the previous night. No, yeah. to just be fair, I'm saying when I'm like 13, when I'm 12, 3 a.m. I haven't, I can't remember the last time I was up until 3 a.m. playing video games. It's been a while. I guess Donkey Kong, maybe. <laughs> Donkey Kong 64, <laughs> where we did that bet. That'd be the last time. Okay, so you're, you're saying you're the best in the world at, at P- blocking out. anxiety until three. Okay. Okay. That's good. Yeah, I can't, I can't argue with that. That feels that possible. I can see I, that. It, it feels likely, honestly, to it me. It does. Like, it makes yeah. a lot of sense to me when you describe it like that. Uh, I actually completely <laughs> buy in. I buy into that in a way that I'm not sure I do with some of Andrew's stuff. But yeah, absolutely. What about you, Jeff? Uh, well, uh, similar to Andrew, I don't know if I currently am still, but there was a point in time uh, when I would stake my life that I was the best head bobber on earth uh, <laughs> when I was making red versus Wait. blue. Uh, I don't oh. think there was anybody that could come even close to bobbing heads like I did. In I've Michigan. been a witness to it that you could, he could do it without even listening. He could just do it based on looking at the waveform. It's insane. So I, th- I think that uh, once again, not entirely certain that I still am, but I would feel pretty good about it. I think that I, there was a point in time when I was the best pego player on earth. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I would, I would, I feel very confident about that. And uh, the third thing is, I think I'm, re- I think I'm the best in the world at compartmentalizing dog tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, it's not going to go in a funny direction, but it's a no. really funny sentence. No, it's, 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 it is what it is, right? I've dealt with a lot of dog tragedy over the last year or so, and <laughs> oh, I've done, it's, it's manifested itself into very funny stories on the podcast, but they weren't funny moments, and I did a really good job of compartmentalizing uh, until I got through them and you know cried in the shower or whatnot, uh, or on a park bench the next day. I mean, your, your ability to just do f- face amongst the rest of your life is, I think, what you're best at. Well, that's it is. It does sometimes feel like I'm in this library talking to you guys for an hour and I look out the window and uh, the entire world is on fire, or at least my entire world is on fire. (laughs) Just like just like just like shit and flames everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) But not always. So just to, to clarify your head, Bob, because I misinterpreted what you meant originally. You mean machinima, like when you're filming, to make it seem like the character is talking, the movement of their head. Yeah, machinimation. Not literal head, like I was imagining like a Wayne's World, like head bob, like you're really like oh, listening to music. No, I wouldn't even put myself like in the top 75 percentile of that. I got no skills in, in IRL head bobbing, no. Okay. I have a it's question. Important. How does percentile yeah. differ from percent? They're spelled differently. <laughs> uh, he's, he's right. Good point. Move on. <laughs> I don't. Percentile. I don't for you. Each of, of the hundred equal. What the fuck? What the fuck is They this? just seem like they can always be interchangeable. I'm not ever in a situation where it's like, oh, he should have said percentile instead of percent. I, definition. Hold on. I fucking now I got to know. Like, it's always talked Uh, about with kids. All right, Nick, go ahead and cut out all this dead air. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, I don't have... I was reading what you wrote, Eric. You wrote a a thing. Yeah, I wrote wrote it for Jeff. This is the thing where I cue him up, and then he reads it, and then we continue with the show. You just posted it. The way it it typically works. I was Googling it. The percentage (laughs) is a means of comparing quantities. A percentile is used to display... (laughs) exactly what Eric wrote. Yeah, I'm reading what Eric wrote. Oh, okay. He just said, read what I wrote. I thought you were reading that off Google. Oh! God, I'm sorry about them, Eric. I think Eric what? broke that. I think Eric caused that. What? How would, how, how was that me? That's me giving the answer, and then one of you takes the ball, gives the answer to the audience, Wait, and we, we continue the, the show. We gotta freaking read the ball first. That's you know what I I feel responsible more than Eric does. I, I typically he's right. One of us will read what he wrote, and then that will carry on. What were you doing, Gavin? Why were you not paying attention to the screen? It was just quiet, and then Gavin went, "Who's gonna read that?" Like you? <laughs> what were you doing? Did I say who's gonna read that? You asked. You asked who's gonna read what Eric <laughs> wrote. Did you not you say that? <laughs> That's how we got here. Yes. 
Why didn't you read it? I, I was I was just trying to come up with the answer in my own head. I was just, I was just reading it look, in my I head. Spaced. Oh. Well, well, that's great. That's very helpful. <laughs> Anyway, this is a hard podcast to explain to people uh, who have uh, never heard of Face, but who might be familiar with Red versus Blue. I meant to I meant to come back around to that about forty minutes ago. Uh, <laughs> just realized I never finished my point. Uh, anyway, it's it's just a hard it's hard to quantify or hard to explain succinctly what this podcast is, and uh, 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 I it, encourage you to try someday. I can. Um, I have a new electrical problem. Ooh. What's your electrical problem? I mean, I assume it's one I've had the entire time, but I've narrowed it down. Sometimes, my toilet, I got like one of those little bidets, it, it will warm the seat, and it will mm -hmm. blast, it will blast the water up the crev. I know that everyone's a, a fan of those on this podcast. Um, they had to run a new outlet to the toilet to put it in. So they just, I guess, daisy chain off the nearest one. And sometimes it trips the breaker, and I couldn't figure out why. And it turns out, if I'm sat on the toilet... And someone rings my doorbell. <laughs> the breaker trips and the toilet turns off, which, you know, for normal toilets, not a problem if you've got no power. But I can't flush it without power. There's like a manual release, I guess, where you have to like take off one of the side panels if you want to actually manually flush it. But it uses power to flush. So now that I know this, I'm so paranoid that when I'm taking... <laughs> Taking a lovely number two. I'm so paranoid that I'm going to get delivery or someone's going to ring the doorbell because then I'll have to leave a bunch of turd in the toilet while I waddle over to the breaker and get it back on. And it's just a bizarre problem to have. I don't know why two areas of the house are on the same, two different areas are on the same breaker. It's literally like attic light, toilet, and doorbell are all on one breaker. <laughs> so is there, hmm. So I, I think what's happening is is the toilet is drawing like basically right at the limit of whatever that breaker yeah. allows, and uh, just ringing the doorbell tips it over the edge. That is oh. so fucking funny, and makes me and makes me so excited to ding dong ditch you <laughs> yeah. all hours of the That's day and night for the rest of your life. It's been oh, hard wow. navigating like. Leaving a toilet full of poo and hoping that Meg doesn't find it while I sprint to the, the <laughs> circuit breakers. How many times has it happened? Uh, it's happened, oh, probably only three times. That's but, quite a few. But it, but now that I've identified it, it's it's terrifying. I used to take just sort of stress-free shits, and now every str every shit is a stress. Huh. So we need to we need to look into Jeff if we can somehow ring his doorbell remotely. I is, dude, is I was the... way ahead of you. We need to we absolutely need to figure <laughs> that out. If we can trigger a doorbell ring remotely anytime, Gavin, I, I'll just that I'll, work? Be, I'll just text with you constantly. I'll just be like, "What are you doing right now? What are you doing right now? Oh, you gonna go play Halo? Do you get you, you gonna do anything? Before? You gonna take a dump? Okay, cool." Uh, I hesitate Wait. to bring this up because I it, it's it's not as funny as your story, but the exact well. Minus the doorbell part, the same thing happens with my uh, bidet toilet as well. About once a week, it's the same thing. They had to put a plug in into the wall. So it's daisy chained onto my laundry room. And about once a week, uh, one of the plugs there will trip a, like the, a little breaker in the plug, you know? Yeah. And, uh, mm -hmm. and then I lose access to my toilet. And my whole bathroom, actually. Uh, <laughs> and then so I have, to, I have to just go out and push that button back in and then it works. Uh, so not very funny, but one funny thing, kind of funny thing did happen. The first time this occurred, we didn't know what to do. We couldn't figure it out. I think I had to go out of town for briefly. So Emily called a, an electrician to come and take a look at it and he couldn't figure it out and he couldn't figure it out and he couldn't figure it out. And he eventually, he eventually ripped the walls out of the bathroom <laughs> to follow the wiring, to figure it out. And he still couldn't figure it out. And then Joey uh, who you know from Go Go Now? Who yeah, is also like a carpenter. He came over and he was like trying to help Emily and this guy. And he looked and he goes, "Oh, your breaker's tripped." And he just hit the button and everything worked again. And I had to have all my walls re drywall. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't pay for it. The guy did it at cost. But uh, yeah, the guy it, a, 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 th a five second fix turned into a three days of painting and drywall. <laughs> Three fucking days. That's, that is such a classic U house problem. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that with all the people involved, nobody thought check the breaker. Just no, <laughs> not not even zero. Well, it's so weird, right? Because it's not just like the breaker in the wall. It's literally the breaker on a plug, 
right? Yeah, the GFCI yeah, thing. Yeah, like yeah, the yeah. GFCI thing, yeah. And so uh, he just, like, Joey figured it out, but, you know, because uh, he's a common sense dude. But yeah, that guy, uh, that guy ended up, on what should have taken oh him one God. second, he he spent three days at my house all day long sweating <laughs> my ass off. The motto of the story is just you gotta keep you gotta keep shit simple. Like the more expensive and fancy something is, the more stupid problems you end up with. Like Jeff's fridge is just it's a custom size, much more yeah. expensive, and I got a freaking toilet that I can't flush with my hand. The, that that might, the side of the thing apart, it's ridiculous. That might be the funniest thing on earth, dude. Uh, if somebody rings your doorbell. If somebody rings your fucking doorbell, you ha- you can't remove turds. Yeah, that's such a strange Keep shit in my doorbell. Off. I know somebody who every time they would get a phone call, their internet would drop briefly on like their landline, and so there'd be times we'd be playing games, and it would be fun to just call them if they they were like winning or something. They had the lead. <laughs> But a shit (laughs) bell connection is great. Jeff, what if we, you know those drinking birds, like these things? Can we like (laughs) attach that to his door and just have it ringing constantly? (laughs) Like we have to, we have to try to get creative with ways in which we can ring it multiple times without actually having to put the effort in of physically pushing it. I love it, dude. That makes so much sense to me. (laughs) Speaking, speaking of bird, I had somebody sent me your swan is kind of famous, Jeff. I don't know if you know this. Is it really? No, I wasn't aware. There is a documented history of your swan attacking people. There is an Instagram video last year of a guy who was like wakeboarding on in that lake and he got attacked by the swan. I have a photo of the swan mid attack. Oh my god! Going that's in on it. this guy. <laughs> Look at him. He's oh I swear to God, it oh Dude, is that the same swan? Fucking big swan. Look at the wings. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. It's like a it's like, a, it's like an eagle. Is that what your face looked like when it was happening to you? <laughs> I don't think I, lo- I, I think I looked. I don't think I looked that cool. <laughs> I think I looked even worse. <laughs> yeah, dude. So that is that is that swan confirmation. Got, that eesh. is the same. He's wow. about to get his back bit. Yeah, that's rough. <laughs> yeah, he uh, the swan bites the guy's ankle and he he eats hard. He he crashes him immediately <laughs> on impact of the swan. The swan takes him out. It's a great Instagram video, uh, but they said that it flew like 150 yard, like it was huge. The distance it covered, yeah, yeah. Someone's the guy said he didn't know that if- swan, right? That's a robot swan. <laughs> Why would swan do that? It's highly aggressive. Oh, uh, it uh, I it. <laughs> it uh. For the record, by the way, if you are anywhere near Austin, Texas, stay away from that swan. It's very dangerous. <laughs> And very aggressive. I want nothing to do with that fucking thing. Uh, I, I, by the way, this photo is such validation to me. It is just as terrifying in picture form as I remember it being. It's very intimidating. And he actually went down. The swan took him out, and he was in the water with the swan. It's amazing he survived. What ha- Did the swan keep at him? No, I guess like it bit him, and then it kind of like held its ground for a minute, and then it fucked off. I don't think it, it really <laughs> stuck around. I don't- it's just looking for the next person. It is, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Get out of my territory that flies away. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, so do we, do we then do the list of what we think other people are the best at? Oh, it's a great idea, Gavin. Wrap this up for Jeff's, Jeff's I'll bit. I'll go with mine. Well, I think Jeff's the f- face bit. I don't know who's who. Who's I think is. Jeff is the best at long term deception, like planning a lie that, and then, you know, not revealing it for years, like the uh-huh. uh, driving test. Or driving, like, know, what, <laughs> or you know, some of the some of the ones that have some of the ones that are a good twelve years old that are still going. Yeah, yeah, some of the ones that I don't even know about yet. And I would yeah. say Andrew is the best at pulling comedy from a small bathroom without even oh. necessarily involving the toilet, which is uh, I think very impressive. I think you're the best at that. <laughs> that's that's very specific. That might be true. What about you, Jeff? Uh, I think Gavin is the. Well, I may be partial, but I think he's, I mean, I think it goes without saying he's the best high-speed photographer in the world. Um, but I think, he's the, I think he's the best at taking something that's really, like, I think he's the best at distilling something down to, uh, that's very complicated into a way that I can understand it. He's really, mm. really, really good at that. He's also, mm-hmm. the, he's also the best at being a best friend I've ever had. Um, and uh, Oh, yours was really nice. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm... I'm a big ass wimp in my old age, uh, Andrew. Uh, I think you are the best at saying something that completely catches me off guard, 
Like, <laughs> you're the best person at coming out of left field I've ever met in my entire life. Like, it's not even close. I like left field. I've been there a while. Left field <laughs> is always great. Is that a baseball it's, term? Uh, I assume or so, be right? Because I realize I use that phrase, but I have no knowledge baseball. of baseball. Like, that's, that's leaked across international waters to a... You know, countries that don't have baseball. I feel like I've said that before, is, but I don't necessarily the, even understand the reference. Is the handedness of the batter what dictates that? What is the what, origin? So you can't of come field? out of left field for Jeff. It would have to be right field. Yeah, I guess I'd be coming out of right field for Jeff in my in my head. I'm assuming it's based on the orientation of most batters who oh, are right handed. Everyone, be quiet. Uh, everybody Eric's quiet. Written <laughs> Eric's read some. I'll read it. Okay. <laughs> Eric's Eric says that at 3:51 p.m. Eric today. Eric said yes. The phrase came from baseball terminology referring to a play in which the ball is thrown from the area covered by the left fielder to either home plate or first base, surprising the runner. That was no explanation to Gavin, I guarantee you. And, and, and would that be flipped for a left-handed batter? But there, no, it's the, the same. The base is in the same place, so it wouldn't be. This base, yeah, I guess yeah. The, the batting orientation is irrelevant. But it. also, baseball is uh, a very right-handed sport and very centered around, and all the rules <laughs> are, are all b- basically built about being right-handed. Lefties are kind of uh, there. There are left-handers in baseball, but I, I, I feel like it's. Uh, it would be funny if a, against lefties, a lefty stepped up to the plate and bases one and three swap. <laughs> <laughs> Just That's to keep a, everything oh, fair. And you can do like a score multiplier with the amount of people you pass <laughs> on your own team. Like if there's a guy at first and second already and you have to go left. <laughs> you guys oh, are reinventing baseball just like the Savannah Bananas. That's what I was about to say. Do you know the banana? I had recently learned banana ball. Their rules. Their rule set is fantastic. I tried, it's way better than normal. I tried to get tickets to a game, but they're sold out for the rest of the year. Do you know what the Savannah bananas are, Gavin? Is that what Jeff posted about the uh, like? There's a, like a baby banana every time, and there's like people on stilts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, they do like entertainment style baseball instead of strict rules, and they have their own rule set. Some of I think my favorite rules from Banana Ball are: is if a player hits a foul ball into the stands and somebody catches it, it's an out. Like the fans can eliminate <laughs> players by catching it. It is the best fucking rule ever. It's a great rule. The other, I think, favorite rule of theirs is if you let somebody walk. So if you throw four foul balls on a guy, he doesn't just get one base. He gets as many bases as he can possibly run to before the other team passes the ball to every position skilled player on the team. So they just have to <laughs> rapidly throw the ball around while one guy is just sprinting as fast as he can. It's great. It's a great rule set. That's amazing. And and the game is over at two hours, come hell or hell water. Yes. They, they put a time on <laughs> That's the best not, rule of all. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think their average games are 90 minutes. So it's, it's great. I've never yeah. seen one. I think the, they, I think the way fun. scoring works, too, is like you get a point per inning that you win. So like if you score 10 runs yes. in an inning and the other team scores two, you just, get, you just win that inning and you get one point, which I think is kind of yeah, interesting, too. Can we Absolutely, sponsor that yeah. team? I don't think they need us, I don't, man. I don't know. Mm. I don't know how that... I think it's a league. It'd be interesting yeah. to look at the league that they're in. I think it's a college. We could probably sponsor baseball. a singular funny object. They'd probably let, let us do that. <laughs> <laughs> like sponsor like wanna... one dude's elbow for a game or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can we sponsor the, uh, the, the thing on the side of the helmet that protects the ear? It's the thing on the side of the helmet that protects the ear. Like the ear donut? Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. <laughs> we'll sponsor one guy's ear donut for a season. Surely they'll let us do that. <laughs> what do you want to put on the ear donut? Face. Yeah. Just the name of the show? Okay. Yeah. I just wasn't, yeah. wasn't sure. We could have a variety of choices. Uh, uh, standard ear across the ear donut. <laughs> I tell you what we could do. We could become the official bread tag sponsor of the Savannah Bananas, <laughs> and we can donate bread tags for all of their bread uh, tagging needs. Have you had a bread tag yet? Have you received it? <laughs> yeah, that's why I brought it up. Have you got one any yours good? yet? Have you got yours yet? No. Andrew, have you got yours yet? I do, yeah. I haven't tried. Uh, have you tried breading? Yeah. So here's the deal. Uh, <laughs> it, f- first off, it's beautiful. Well, let me I guess. mean, it's absolutely fucking beautiful. <laughs> let me guess. There's a reason they're made out of plastic. Uh, <laughs> and the, and the, the deal with... The deal with... Uh, to, to refresh the audience's memory that we were trying to solve a problem, and uh, uh, I would say ostensibly we did. Uh, the problem being, you know what it's like when you get like a... A uh, loaf of uh, Wonder Bread or wheat bread or whatever it is you eat, twelve grain, whatever, 
And uh, it's got that, it either has a bread tie. Nobody likes a bread tie. Bread ties are lame, right? Uh, or sometimes it'll have that bread tag. And the bread tag is cool because it'll say like, uh, hey, the best by June 3rd or whatever. Uh, and uh, it's kind of a clever little design. But invariably, after three or four times you use it as the plastic bins, one of the ends snaps off and then the bread tie's fucking useless. And then you, you got to do the thing where you roll the bread and then you like shove the thing under the bread and sit on it. And then it's like, it's just, it's fucking dumb. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, Uniform uh, via face decided we were going to solve that problem by creating a metal bread tag that does not bend and break. And I am proud. I am honored to say that face it's either in the store now and been in the store for a while or it's about to be in the store. We have solved the problem of bread tags breaking these metal bread tags, these metal, these light blue sky blue <laughs> face emblazoned with the date June 19th, 2022 on them, bread tags will never bend or break. However, <laughs> it turns out that the bending part, pretty integral, pretty integral to, yeah. to, to bread tag functionality. Uh, it's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say impossible to use, <laughs> to get, uh, to get the, <laughs> the wrapper, uh, the plastic in the bread tag holder. It's just not going to happen because this fucker will not break. It will not bend. It's sturdy. Yeah. So it's just unfortunately. Yeah. No, the gap is regulation gap. Uh, it's just that without the bend, you just can't. It, so it's it doesn't work as a bread tag as as in the traditional sense, but it definitely looks like one. It's very pretty. <laughs> And even better, it's got a magnet on the back of it, so it's really, it's quite possibly the world's first bread tag kitchen magnet. That's permanent. I, I will say it's a rare problem for us. I feel like these are too high quality is the problem. Yeah, yeah, they're and, just and, um, real good. It's really sturdy. You can't bend it. So it's too luxury anyway. and therefore too inconvenient. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, this is a show tag. This is the kind of tag you bring out to brag to your friends at Christmas dinner. You know, like when you pull the good plates out once a year, the china <laughs> or whatever. You know, when you polish up the 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 old 1955 uh, like Porsche to drive around on the su on Sunday. Uh, it's the thing that you revere when like all your friends, maybe your coworkers, maybe you're gonna have your boss over for dinner and you want to impress him. You, this is the bread tag you pull out. Just don't try to use it as a bread tag. I can't wait to get mine. I can't wait to see videos of people <laughs> trying to use them. <laughs> It's great. I don't, I'm curious if I, I really want to get a loaf of bread, right? I'm trying to think if I, I think I have one in my fridge. I think it would take me probably like five minutes. I think you could do it, but the time <sighs> it would require to slip it through. Would be, I, why, don't, uh, why don't you try live on the podcast? I'll that's go good, get that's some a, that's, right that's a good point. Why don't you do that? We'll end with Andrew trying to force a metal bread clip. I'll say, I'll say while he's gone, uh, I, I felt uh, exactly like he did. And I did, I... Hold on, give the dog his pill. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I had, I took that five minutes to try to make it work. I was bound to determine, and I gave up. So if he's able to do it, he's either lying or he's, uh, he's made of. That's interesting because listening to you describe it, I, I'm almost 100 percent sure I could get it in. I thought so too. I thought so too. Uh, yeah, it's like one of those things where it's like I kind of want the challenge of it now. I have the I, confidence. Yeah, I encourage you. Uh, I, I challenge you to to make it work. I hope you can. If people will stop stealing one packages, then uh, I'll give it a go. Did we find them? Did not? Did Jeff not find all your packages? Uh, yeah, I, I found th them. No, they found some, but Sarah was annoyed that someone took all of my achievement hunter merch. <laughs> 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 Do you think Andrew has transitioned to the uh, floor that contains his kitchen already? Do you think he's hurt his ankle yet? A hundred percent. I was about to say, he's absolutely hurt his ankle. His mic is muted, <laughs> which is a great point from Nick. He's screaming. Yeah. He's screaming from the other room and we can't hear him. <laughs> he's, so. uh, he's limping back right now. This is going to be rough. Okay. So I have the bread. That was way faster than I was expecting. I was about to bring tag. up laser tag and everything, but go ahead. I'm trying. I mean, I don't know what you mean by go ahead. I'm trying to slip this. You definitely can't bend it. I mean, maybe with pliers, but it would. I'll say too. Uh, one thing I did find out, I was showing it off to Emily, and uh, she was agreeing that it's beautiful. And she was wondering why it was light blue, and I was like, I don't know. I think that's just what color they all are. Turns out that's not the case. The color they're color dependent based on the day they were put out. So light blue is Monday. What? 
So apparently, like if you see a bread tag uh, and it's light blue at the store, you know that that bread has been out since Monday. If it's green, ah. it's been out since whatever day that is. Yeah. Didn't know. Seems okay, to be I struggling. Think I think, uh, yeah, I, I've ripped, I'm ripping holes into the bread bag itself. <laughs> yeah. Trying to, yeah, it's, it's pinching it's it. It's pretty sharp metal. Mm-hmm. It is pretty sharp metal. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think, I don't think this works at, in any way. I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. I think I was dramatically wrong. Yeah, wow. you'll mangle you'll mangle it real fast. Uh, and by it, I mean the plastic. Yeah, I'll try and pick up uh, mine to try next week. If you if you get it, you deserve a medal of some kind. This is you. If you if you do it, you're the bread tag champion of <laughs> face. That's for sure. I'll just put a chain around the bread bread clip, and that could be my medal. <laughs> <laughs> become a chain guy with a bread clip thing as the ah. Oh, I would wear that. That would, I would wear that too. I would wear that. Yeah, let's make them chains. Don't forget though, if you have a pacemaker uh, or some sort of a metal implant that is a magnet, I don't want to. I don't <laughs> want you wearing a bread tag around your heart that's going <laughs> to cause you to have a heart attack. Uh, okay, well, I guess that's uh, as Andrew uh, tries and tries and fails and fails. <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and say thank you for listening to another episode of <laughs> Face. This was episode 107. You have survived it. Congratulations. Uh, as always, season three, uh, ye- no, season four, year three, uh, volume one. Volume two's got to be coming up pretty soon. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Leave a like and a comment and a review and a rate and all of those things. And uh, don't forget to listen next week because we'll be here and we'll be talking and you're going to want to hear what Andrew has to say. Uh, It's going to be interesting and aggravating. Bye. Oh, God. (laughs) And there goes the ankle. (laughs) Did this table go over again? It didn't go under. Is his fire extinguisher okay? (laughs) God damn it. We got to keep this (laughs) up. Buddy, what happened? Doesn't work. (laughs) Hey guys, Major League Fan on a 10-day contract, Jack here with a look at next week's episode of Face. Welcome to year three. Andrew forgets that he talked about that already. Gavin wants a new phone number. How tall is Panton? Here comes a gift for Jeff. What exactly is a regulation dog? And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face.